Welcome D-Lab everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to install the time delay circuit onto Relay RY302 in the Johnson 500 power supply. Then I'll give you a step-by-step -step procedure how to safely verify the operation of RY302 and RY303, the high voltage relay, using a Heathkit high voltage power supply. Here we go. Okay, before we get started, it's disclaimer time. I did not come up with this time delay circuit. I had a problem with the Johnson 500. RY302 was not operating correctly, so I was doing some research. I stumbled upon a text entry in a forum on the AM window by WQ9E, Roger. And he explained how to add the circuit to the current RY302 in the Johnson 500 to stop flashover. So I was able to construct the circuit, but I thought, hey, the addition of a simple diagram and then a procedure how to test it would be a value. And that's why I'm producing this video. All right, here's RY302 in the Johnson 500 power supply. And below it, you see the added time delay circuit. This is a great circuit to implement even if your transmitter is not exhibiting evidence of this malfunction, consider it preventative maintenance. Okay, so there's only three parts required. A terminal board, a 1N4007 diode, and a 10 microfarad capacitor. Procedure is pretty easy. You mount the five position terminal board to the chassis near RY302. The center ground tab on this terminal board is not used. You're going to install the diode and capacitor per this diagram that I'm going to show you right now. To test the circuit we're going to use the external high voltage power supply so you don't even need to turn on your Johnson 500 to verify that these items are operating. Let me show you how to do that. Alright before we start the testing of the relays let me emphasize how important it is for you to add this simple circuit to your Johnson 500. The purpose of this time delay was to maintain the output load, which is your antenna, for a short period of time after the high voltage de-energizes so that it has a chance to dissipate. Without that, you have a high chance of flashover, damaging your power supply, or the RF output connector on the 500's transmitter. So if you're seeing a flash from your power supply when unkeying or experiencing some intermittent blowing of the main power fuses, it's more than likely RY302 is causing this problem. All right, for your reference, I have generated a step-by-step -step procedure. If you guys want a copy of that, just let me know. There's a few key points I need to point out before we test the relays. Number one, we are only testing the relays. The power supply will not be powered up. Do not plug it in. Do not hook up any of the cables to the RF deck. We are going to centralize our testing just on the relays using the Heathkit IP2717 high voltage power supply. Now right, here we go. Step one, you're going to connect your power supply to the time delay circuit which is in parallel with the coil of RY302. Your negative lead is going to go to the negative side of the filter cap. Your positive lead is going to go up here to the white wire which is connected to the cathode of the 1N4007 diode. Make sure you get this polarity correct because if you reverse it you're going to have a big surprise when that cap lets loose. Alright, so double check that. Next thing you see I got my positive lead off at this time. You're going to turn on your high voltage power supply and I'm choosing about 125 volts to test the relays with. Okay, the applied voltage in the 500 is about negative 160 volts unloaded. So we're probably pretty safe with about 125. You're going to connect up to your power supply. Now we're going to turn on 
the DC, and you should see the relays energized. So RY302 and 303 are both going to pull in. There they go. Now if I turn off the DC, they'll both de-energize. Energize. De-energize. If you look at the current on my meter, it's only about 25 milliamps. So if you perform this test and you see that current swinging high, shut it off because you've got something connected wrong. So that is a mechanical test of the relays. You can see them operating. If you suspect that your contacts on the relays are dirty or slightly corroded, now is a good time to use a burnishing tool and polish them up. So that's the end of the test. You can see that it's a pretty safe way to verify the operation of these relays rather than firing up the power supply and being exposed to high voltages. Thank you to Roger WQ9E for the information. I hope that the additional information that I've provided will help you guys if you need to add this circuit. And of course, if you'd like a copy of my procedure, shoot me an email.